welcome to the Katie Halper Show. We are so excited to be playing our bonus Patreon episode for you today. What we do is we play this ridiculous setup interview that CNN did with Randy Rice, where they ask him a very stupid gotcha question in order to discredit single payer. We play that clip. We also play Randy's response to that clip and what he learned from doing media like that. And then we talk to Adam Johnson, a journalist who writes for places like FAIR, Fairness and Accuracy in Reporting, and he analyzes what CNN and other networks do in order to discredit programs like Single Payer. Randy, Bryce, thank you so much for joining us, Iron Stash on Twitter. You were on CNN. You're not just against, though, what the Republicans yeah. are trying to do in Congress right now. You want to go even further than Obamacare. You're for single payer. You're for basically sure. universal health care. You know, and there's analysis from a group called the Urban Institute, which we haven't been able to double check. But it says, you know, if you, Bernie Sanders, you look at his plan for universal coverage that he ran on during the primary, you know, it could cost $32 trillion over 10 years. Even if it's half that, that's a ton of money. How do you propose paying for it? Well, there's a lot of people that are getting away with not paying their fair share in taxes right now. Um, and they benefit you, you the raise, most you from raise society. You want to raise $32 trillion in taxes? Well, I'm, I'm not saying that, that we have to look at ways to um, just increase complete costs. There's, there's a lot of things that uh, we can look at as far as making things cost effective. Um, but again, there's a lot of people that are not paying what, you know, their fair share of, of taxes. Yeah. There's corporations yeah. getting away with, with a lot. That, that would be quite a tax hike. I mean, that's an astonishing number, $32 trillion over, over a decade. But I want to know, since CNN is such a, uh, and I, I think they were joking when they said the most trusted name in news, but is there anything <laughs> you wanted to say that because they love doing gotchas and they love pe- cutting people off and they love sound, sound bites and talking points, is there anything you want to say that you weren't able to say while you were on the television? Well, yeah. I mean, I mean first of all, um, I, I wasn't, I, I was not expecting the way that that interview went. They they asked for like two or three subjects to talk about beforehand. Um, so I sent some, and it wasn't going to be that long of an interview. But you know, to be fair, I it, it was good that 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 it happened the way it did because now I, you know, I realize that this is part of the um, the thing you stepped into. You mm-hmm. need to be ready for for working over the shark tank if you're going to fall in or, you know, your right. your toe's going to dangle in. So it, I don't think it was unfair. The, the part that I think um, kind of hit me was, you know, first of all, they came out with these numbers and they admitted, they're like, and these, you know, they, they said something along the lines of, you know, and these numbers aren't verified or, you <laughs> right. know, so good. they made part of what they said was saying that, you know, our numbers aren't, they're not proven. And I'm thinking, I'm like, wait a minute, you're pulling this stuff out and, and you can't even say that you're, there's proof that you believe the numbers you're, you're telling me. I was just thinking, you know, where did this come from? And then I was, like, trying to figure out what, what number are you talking about as far as, you know, like the $32 trillion. Is that long-term? That's got to be a long-term thing because it's like everybody knows that single-payer actually, it's cheaper. Right, going saves the money. Single-payer single right. route. Right. And that's the whole thing is getting the insurance companies out. So I, But then again... You know, I think part of the reason I, I answered the way I did was it's like I understand you have to hurry up and get your get out what you have to say. Um, so, I mean, I wasn't ready for it. That's that's on me. But, you know, I don't uh, I don't look for excuses. No, I'm, sure, a, right. I'm, a, I'm a working guy and I'm doing the best I can. Right. And, I, and I'm calling out their hypocrisy and Good, yeah. and baloney. And if that's you know, and then the NRCC sent out I was getting, um, you know, they sent out a press release or something slamming me and. And claiming I, I was calling for a $32 trillion tax hike. Um, and I'm like, you know, it, it, that didn't bug me at all. That actually, it was, you know, like a, a merit badge. Because of like... Right, totally. Because NRCC Ryan, is super conservative, right? Their slogan is protecting our historic Republican majority. So you definitely don't want to get into right, by them. Right. Well, no, it's it's like, yeah. And they carry Paul Ryan's water. Right. But, you know, and it's... Um, I take that as a badge of honor, and it's it's good if they're that scared. You know, after Paul Ryan won his last election by 35 points, and they're worried about me after two weeks, I'm like, they're rattled, and, and that's a good thing. And I'm going to get better at, you know, how I answer questions. Um, we're going to take a trip out to Washington. I'm going to get, you know, educated on some issues that, that I'm not an expert on because I'm 
I build things with my hands. But right. You've been actually busy I, working and carrying baby right. shoes. Yeah. Right. Right. So I'm not, you know, I'm not worried about it. It's, yeah. Uh, I, I consider that, a, you know, and again, um, the thing with um, like past campaigns too, it was like, yep, I lost two, I lost two races. I tried. Um, but if you need to know anything about it, it was a learning experience. Right. You know, how did your campaign launch go? Because the last one I did, it was pretty doggone successful. Yeah. Also, you know who lost a bunch of times? And he's not president and he wasn't the nominee, but he's doing pretty well, is someone named Bernie Sanders. Lost a bunch yeah, of times. right. So that's pretty inspiring. Right. Yeah. Well, um, right. because, again, uh, unfortunately, we live in a world where you need talking points and not nuance. But you definitely right. know all this stuff. You have your – you got the info. You got uh, – all the common sense stuff on this, and then it's just a question of being able to spit this stuff out for for the way that people kind of exploit the news and exploit information. And mm -hmm. uh, I, yeah, I think that what CNN did is just they really should be called corporate news network. Uh, <laughs> so I, I really salute you. And we, yeah, sorry, what were you gonna say? I was just gonna say better that it it went like it did then. Yeah, you know, not it's later true. On. Early on, right? And I, I want to learn. I want right. to learn. I'm a quick learner. And, and I'm not afraid to take hits. I know I know they're going to be coming, so bring it on. Great. Bring it on. Yeah, you've ta you've taken worse. You're a veteran right. iron worker. You've taken worse physical hits. Right. Um, and as someone who struggles also for things that should be rights in this country, while, while Paul Ryan right. apparently fantasizes in college about cutting Medicare and Medicaid, what kind of guy right. does that? Wow. Right. He, he needs to see, you know, my dad's a doctor. He's a psychiatrist. So uh, Paul Ryan, just putting it out there, I'm sure my dad would see you pro bono. In case you don't want to spend some of your millions or billions or however much money you have uh, talking about your weird fantasies about cutting people's health care. Not sure what's going on there. Maybe some mom issues, some dad issues. He'll get into it. But um, you're not saying any of that. That's all on me. You're not disparaging him. Um, Randy, thank you so much for coming on the show. We would love to have you back. And I'm going to send you a My bunch of, of former guests. They can all arm you with the talking points, that healthcare stuff. We got um, Matt Brunig. We got Adam Gaffney. I'm going to send you my dad. I'm going to send you Adam Johnson, <laughs> the, the journalist. He referred to how you were grilled by CNN. Uh, he said, Iron Stash is grilled by CNN drones using Urban Institute's BS, 32 trillion single payer number. Thank God for c centrist think tanks. Speaking of Adam Johnson, here is our interview with Adam Johnson. Do I deliver or what? As we said, Adam Johnson is a journalist who writes for places like The Nation and FAIR, Fairness and Accuracy in Reporting. And he also has just recently started a podcast, The Citations Podcast. It's a media criticism podcast, which he co-hosts with Nima Shirazi. You can find that on Twitter, C-I-T-A-T-I-O-N-S. P-O-D-C-S-T, so podcast without the A at the end, and also facebook.com slash citations needed. And follow Adam on Twitter at Adam Johnson NYC. Very excited to be talking to our next guest who is making his Katie Helper Show debut. I've been trying to get him on for a while, but he's he's very busy. He's very in demand. He's, uh, you know, <laughs> very Hollywood. Adam, thanks for joining us. Hi, how are you doing? Good. You? I'm well. Great. So uh, I really like reading your pieces. You're kind of relentless and ruthless in a very good way about tracking all of the media bias. I interviewed Randy Bryce about his campaign. He's, of course, going to be running against Paul Ryan. And I, I thought you had some really great uh, things to say about a CNN interview that he did. Could you just set up what happened? Uh, Randy Bryce was on CNN, and he was blindsided with um, a classic example of what I call deficit trolling, which is where when, when progressives or, or big government liberals or socialists support things like single-payer health care, they're, they, they're confronted with these huge numbers uh, by these brain-dead pundits from these, uh, from these you know, institutes they don't understand, citing numbers they, never, they don't really know the origins of. To kind of scare people with huge dollar amounts, and that's to kind of that's to kind of stigmatize and to demonize the idea of single payer healthcare and the national healthcare system in general. Of course, it's all out of context, and uh, you know they do it a lot. They did it to Bernie Sanders, and they did it to Mr. Bryce. Unfortunately, that's CNN's job. CNN's job is to you know pr promise you free publicity. They put you on there, then they 
then they dress you down. You're not just against, though, what the Republicans yeah. are trying to do in Congress right now. You want to go even further than Obamacare. You're for single payer. You're for basically sure. universal health care. You know, and there's analysis from a group called the Urban Institute, which we haven't been able to double check. But it says, you know, if you, Bernie Sanders, you look at his plan for universal coverage that he ran on during the primary, you know, it could cost $32 trillion over 10 years. Even if it's half that, that's a ton of money. How do you propose paying for it? Randy's instincts were correct, which was to which is to talk about the asymmetry of the conversation. Well, there's a lot of people that are getting away with not paying their fair share in taxes right now. Um, and there's a lot of people that are not paying what, you know, their fair share of, of taxes. Yeah. There's corporations yeah. getting away with, with a lot. The instincts to kind of reframe the argument, I think, are good. I mean, I don't think it was that bad. When I, when I saw it on Twitter, I thought it was going to be a disaster. I thought he did pretty well. No, no, it wasn't a disaster. No, it, it, was, it wasn't by any means a disaster. I just think that it's, um, you know, they, they mentioned it three times. I mean, they literally, it grills them. He, you know, he didn't quite give them the answer they wanted, so they went after him again. Yeah. That's what these jerks are going to do. That's what they're going to continue doing. Um, right. And, you know, and you and I both know that these, that these glorified, you know, hand models they have on that set or don't know a first goddamn thing about the study they're citing. Right, which they even admitted. You know, and there's analysis from a group called the Urban Institute. It's so embarrassing. Which we haven't been able to double check. And then they're like, that's a real big tax hike. Th that would be quite a tax hike. I mean, that's an astonishing number. They don't even know what they're talking about. $32 trillion. They were, they were actually wrong. The tax hike isn't, there, is not, even by those own numbers, isn't $32 trillion. It's $17 trillion. $32 trillion is the total cost, but that also includes what the cost already are. The hike is $17 trillion. We already pay the other, whatever, $18 trillion as it is. Even by their own premise, they were they were factually incorrect. I literally, they, they, they skimmed some article and saw the biggest number and cited it. They have to uh, deficit troll you because, um, you know, we don't want those wacky socialist policies being implemented because that's what corporate media is largely designed to do. So, you know, that's kind of what happens. It's not the biggest deal in the world, probably because it was in the middle of the afternoon and no one really watches CNN. But it went... Um, it went viral on on social media, um, and it's it's a it's an important object lesson in, in what progressives and and uh, dem socks will face in the next uh, two to three years coming forward to 2020. They're, they're, these numbers are going to be thrown around left and right, and I think it's important that before that happens, uh, we you know we sort of learn how to address this. So, what if you were giving a training, but uh, if you were a media trainer uh, for people on how to respond to very biased neoliberal? media what would you say to people first rule is don't accept the premise of the question right this is something republicans are very very good at they never accept the premise of the question so the first thing that i would do if i'm throwing this question if cnn says well what do you think about this study i have here that clearly this this brain dead uh, anchor just got handed to him by some producer i and they say what do you think of 32 trillion dollars in cost for a single payer health system i would say can you tell me the economist who wrote that that's mm -hmm. that study and they'll look at you with a blank face and you say that's because you don't know anything about the study do you Turn it back on them. Make it clear that they that their that their question is very very superficial, and exploit that superficiality by asking them details about the policy. Now, if they say, "Well, this isn't about me; it's about you," then you say, "Okay." So here are the rest of Adam Johnson's answer and more tips about how to respond to gotcha questions. Please go to patreoncom slash the Katie Halper Show. Thanks.